Hello, hello, everybody. I think I'm live. Should be live. Let's test this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, it's a nice day today. A nice day for drawing. I'm gonna work on this uh, um, silence do good cover. Just really haven't done much in it since I touched it last on the live stream. So picking up exactly where I left off a while ago. Let's see how we're looking here. Screen look full. Okay. All right, I'm going to try drawing the Ben character today. Ben Franklin. Young Ben Franklin. So I'm just going to make him look cool. Let's see. Okay. First, I want to check and see if there's anybody here checking in. Put the link in of you, please. <coughs> Time to draw Ben. He's going to be a standard uh, young, attractive man. Let's see. I'm still in the rough stage on him. I really want to work out his. Have I got. This is only a. I want to make that 100%. Oh, Ben is 100%. I just on the wrong layer. Okay. Okay. Got to make him look cool, intense, but youngish. I, I, I want to draw the construction lines of his face. You know, I'll make this stuff look more angular to start with, but then I'm going to smooth it out. And I might have to pull some reference up. I think he's got some pretty whoopty hair though. Check out my reference in there. Oh yeah, he's got plenty of whoopty here and an interesting kind of head uh, headgear. I don't know if he's wearing this in this story. I have to check with, with Sean on this. This guy looks like Cy or uh, what do you call it? Uh, steampunk. I love steampunk. It's cool. Okay. So he's going to be kind of cool looking like a younger guy like Cyclops. Let's see. I don't think he has a jacket on at this point, though. But it doesn't matter. I don't really want too much uh, close indication. I want to draw the musculature. Now, which way should I have his eyes looking? Thinking kind of... Uh, I don't know. It could go that way. Which is probably best, but let me see if I go the other way. No, that's just like, huh? Is that something else? Someone knocking at the door? That's not good. Yeah, 
that's more intense. It's like, what's over my shoulder? Okay, let's see where I'm at here. My reference. Make that a little smaller. Okay, I can see what my studio's doing here too. Okay. Let's see what they got with the... Constructing in his face. Want that reference to be seen too. It's a nice day, I got the windows open. I hope it's nice where you guys all are today. So that means, though, noise <laughs> could be coming through. If you hear kids yelling and stuff, that's the, that's the way it goes. Okay. I'm going to, this is sort of, you're looking up a little bit on this guy's face, so. See, these construction lines I put in here for the bones and stuff, I'll just like sort of start to take that out. Oops, what kind of weird brush do I have here? And you see he gets younger pretty quickly. He's kind of got a thin face. Um, Sean has drawn his character with a bit of a thin face, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that in mind. It's gonna be look kind of looking like Spider Man, I think. Peter Parker, I should say. That's kind of what I would imagine young Ben to look like. Although it's, I don't know if there's any pictures of him young. It'd be interesting. I wonder what he looked like young. It's a nice day. Beautiful day. And I'm drawing comics. Okay, so what am I gonna do with this guy's other arm? This this arm is going back. I want it to go back. But I'm thinking, I'm not sure if he has a gun yet in the story. It'd be cool if he has one. If so, I put it right up in here. Make sure his arm is going down. You draw through stuff, by the way. As a matter of fact, it'd be easier just to really dim her out. And then I won't get distracted. But I don't want to hear her completely because I want to find out where things are intersecting. Back to the Ben layer. Okay. We got these really long cool there's a cool long gun in the story i forget where it is but okay so here's his muscle so this arm is coming up i think i might have to tilt it go up higher which is fine it 
They don't, they don't want him too beefy. He's kind of a... Well, Ben Franklin, apparently, according to Sean, was uh, pretty tall and pretty athletic and pretty strong. Avid swimmer. So I've heard. Oh, that's the wrong tool. Brush somewhat thick still, like a 14. What's the resolution on this by this by the way on this? Let's see. Image size is 200 percent 10 by 15 at 200 percent That's fine for sketch. When I scan it in, I'll, I'll use this as an, as an underlay when it's done. I'll go back in. And that's when I scan it in at, you know, uh, 300%. 300 is good enough for print. It should be. I gotta try to figure out what to do with There's an intersection here with, with this sword, her sword, and his gun. So. Make sure when you're drawing these figures, like, see this, this neck? You know, draw it through. You know, if you want this thing to look right, because if you don't, if you just you know try to figure out where this line is without figuring out about drawing this back of his bone, the backbone sort of his of his body, you'll miss most likely. Okay, what kind of boots does he have? Cool boots. But actually, I got to look at the reference. This is the cover reference. I have to look at the reference in the, the story itself. So you won't be able to see this, but I will bring it up. So I have to see it. Let's see. Let's see where it is in this part of the story. He's got, actually, doesn't have like a regular shirt. He's got a kind of overcoat and vest. And no boots, actually. He's got the, whatever you call those, um, knickers, I think they call them. Gotta watch how I say that word. <laughs> knickers. Nick. <laughs> K N I C K. Let's see. Where's the fight? Because that's the scene where this is going to be. This is an exciting story. They they capture they, they go back in time, steal Ben Franklin, put him into a uh, an AI program. And or convince him to go into one, and then, and say everything's perfect, and and you start to see a little bit of the wisdom of Ben Franklin. He, he's not having it. He's he's not convinced. But he gets he can't he can't really figure it out. Too he's really a fish out of water. He thinks he's dead at first. He thinks he's in heaven. So once he he figures it out pretty quick, because smart guy. Okay, I got some reference now. I really don't know if I need to hold this reference up, but... Okay. Dude, I say a lot in K. Sorry.
pant legs. K N I C K E R S. And shoes, it looks like kind of buckled shoes. Yeah, usually I do a couple layers and I pull it, uh, then I just go down, bring down the, the opacity and make something a little bit um, tighter. But in this case, I am simply going to use one layer and just go back and erase and draw. This is There's two ways to, you know, to kind of do it. Okay, what's going to happen to that other leg? I didn't really think about it. Oh, there it is. It's going back. So the pant leg, you know, it's pulling up here, tension there, as this gets folded. When you think of clothes, think of paper, like the, the way paper would fold, is, you know, crinkles up, like, if it was a cylinder made out of paper. And that's when people say folds in the clothes, it really actually means, very, quite literally, folds in the clothes, which is why you get more angles, you know, we don't, we don't want it all smooth. Look at J.C. Leindecker or something like that and how he does that stuff. It's incredibly fantastic. Okay. The way these figures interact, they're really, they're almost doing Twister. leg up. I think I heard someone beep in. Hang on a second. Oh, there. There's Sean. Howdy. How you doing? Oh, he, does, he can't hear me yet. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Are you live? Yeah, we are live, yeah. What up, everybody? You know, you're not very loud in my ears. Let me see. I'll turn it up. Well, it's because my mic's up here because I'm working. Okay, I'll just, but don't don't yell all of a sudden in your mic because I got my headphones, <laughs> my earbuds. In. Okay. <laughs> so I'm all the way cranked. Can you hear now, or should I? Do I need help? You're fine. You're better now. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you better actually you better make sure that you're you're up and volume because for the audience, you know, not not just me. Yeah. How do I sound, chat? Do I sound okay? I think you sound quiet still. Man, this mic, I gotta get a better mic. I spent $300 on this mic. I don't like it. It's a sure mic though, isn't it? Yeah, but you gotta be like right on the thing, you know? And oh, I'm that sounds great. To, I'm trying to draw, you know? I gotta, I gotta draw. Yeah, so uh, you're, someone's away. saying you're, uh, J-Bot says you're far, far away. You Could be louder. Says far Paul, but, away. Okay, give, a, give, it, give it a second now. You just, I think you're better now. Get because they have the 10 second delay, we don't really know the answer to. Oh, yeah, huh? The live delay in case anyone does anything, dirty. yeah. Well, when you go on, uh, when you enter studio, you know, you, you look you look at that bar, right? That, that, yeah, um, and you can tell pretty much how how much you're you want to want to be almost to the top and not to the top, right? Kind of, I think, right? With the, yeah. the sound check bar, whatever it is, just need to get the mic like right there, that's in the shot. Okay, so I haven't done anything since I talked to you last. It's like you haven't done anything. No, well, I mean, I'm, I've been busy, but you know, just yeah. life, you know. And, Work. And I was coloring a couple pieces of Andy's. So, uh, had to get to, he's, he's launching on Sunday, uh, Cordrath. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had to get a couple pieces done that for color for him, and uh, I don't think I can show bad. I hate this. You know, when you do a drawing and then. Like you can't show it. It's it's like did you ever get some uh, someone a Christmas present and you just like you just oh my gosh I want them to see it so bad you know yeah <laughs> and you can't show it to anybody. It's like or tell everybody. It's like I gotta tell somebody about this. 
Cause I was always like working in um, in Hollywood on these all these different campaigns and stuff. I'd be working on the coolest stuff, and I couldn't show any of it. And I know, doesn't like, kill you. And then and then when, if you're working on that stuff, isn't it like you you're done with that campaign? Then it comes out, and people are like, "Oh, this is exciting!" Like, "Oh, that's old sold last year," you know. You're like, man, I've been looking at that thing for like freaking ever. Yeah, that's that's not ex nothing exciting about it anymore. What are you talking about? You think it's exciting now? You should have been there with us working on it. Yeah, the worst was you'd get guys that would get straight up fired because they would put stuff. And I remember there was one guy I was working with, and he made some X Men um, movie posters, and he because we were working on X Men movie posters. He the movie hadn't even come out yet, and he was dropping that crap in his portfolio, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, you're gonna get fired!" And then he yeah. got fired. He got fired. Hey, Marcus is here. Do you, do you know who Marcus is, uh, Sean? I do not know who Marcus. Oh, he's in is. a lot of the chats. Uh, he has he's, he's on Twitter. He does art. I think he went to Joe Kubert. Uh, Marcus, you can correct me, but he is just a, an encyclopedia of comic book knowledge. He knows pretty much everything. If you have a question in comics, he's oh, really? going to know he's it. He's one of those. Where he yes, he like is one of those. Stays he's, in he's, his brain. Yeah, so he's an uh, encyclopedia. Walking encyclopedia. I kind of wonder if this new generation, of, there's nobody reading these comics. Is there going to be anybody who's like an encyclopedia of what's going on now? <laughs> uh, man, <clears throat> it's just sad to see where comics are now. Yeah. Have you, by the way, I'm curious, have you, I just finished watching a bunch of the Zach, you know, Zach's, uh, your boy Zach's uh, um, videos and just, you know, all that stuff that's going on with the with ad and the cancel culture and stuff. Have you seen much of that? Or? I haven't watched any of it. I've been so busy trying to, um, I have no excuses really because I've been busy working and then when I'm not working because my you know, you can only work so long because i got to wear an elbow brace now and stuff because I'm working too much. Um, I've been modding, uh, doing a modded play through a Skyrim. <laughs> I've been spending all my time modding a video game because I'm a giant dork. Are you video, you're a video game guy? Big time. I am such a video game guy that me and my wife have two TVs on the living room wall so that we can watch movies and television programs so she doesn't get too bored and I can play video games. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, I, I was into them. Then I found they were just taking my too much of my time. That yeah. was the problem. Uh, well, but I, was, I had, just, I had the GameCube because, you know, my kids had it. So I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, can't, I can't get past this level. I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm online trying to figure out Scooby-Doo, you know. <laughs> 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 like, I'm online and there's there's like... I see there's like other moms in there with with the walk in saying, what are Hilarious. you doing when you get to this thing, you know? I'm like, uh, you, you too? Because <laughs> they're trying to figure it out for the kids, you know? That's so funny, man. Yeah, I've always been a big gamer. I don't, I don't watch a terrible amount of TV anymore just because I don't like I, so many shows I just don't like. I'm like, I can't really get into anything. I don't know. So, I just so Marcus went to the. I'm sorry. Marcus went to the School of Visual Arts. Uh, oh, nice. Is is that Chicago? Or is that New York? What is Chicago, one is that? right? I think I think it might be. He'll tell us in a minute. Oh, Jbot says uh, same here, Salty. I sell retro games for a living. Yeah, dude. Like that's awesome. Like now, when you say retro, I saw a post the other day on Twitter, and they were claiming that Xbox 360 were retro games, and I was like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not retro. To me, retro you're, you're is not like, old, right? <laughs> ret to me, retro is like, I, my first video game experience was on my dad's Intellivision. My dad had an Intellivision. That was my first gaming experience. So that's retro to me. Intellivision. What, what, I, I remember the name, but what kind of games did that have? Oh, man, dude. It was like ColecoVision, but it was like the same kind of thing. It was a competition for ColecoVision. It was before the Nintendo. Okay, so yeah, we're talking hard, like, like yeah. we're talking like Space Invaders type quality stuff, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like Space Invaders. I mean, the games were, the games were very fun, but it was what four bit graphics essentially. Mm -hmm. Good times though, we we rocked that thing for a long time. 
This is what I love about Photoshop. Look at that. I just like, oh, the head was a smidge too big. Grab it. <laughs> I know. Pull it down. And, and oh my gosh. And it's, you know, you have to redraw it if you're drawing in pencil. So he looks pretty good. I'll, I'll mold his face a little bit more, try to get that. Because, you know, you got that. It's He's sort of thin. I want to keep that thinness, of course. I, I can, you know, mold the shape any way to make it look like mm -hmm. any character. And you've drawn him with a, a bit of a thinner face, so I'm going to stick with that. But, uh, you know, you can still make a, a thin face strong, you know? Jimmy, uh, I put this in this uh, in Jimmy's uh, link thing. Oh, by the way, in the story, does he have that thing that he has on the cover with the um, the, the uh, goggles? Like, no. Or, do I just take it off? Um, I don't care because he's gonna get the goggles eventually. But actually, but... you know what? No, no, no. Yes, I'm sorry. He does. Yeah, leave him in. Leave him in, dude. Okay. Yeah, because I I do I really do like it when the thing is representative of what is in the book. As he much he as possible. He doesn't have it at issue one, and he doesn't he doesn't get it until issue three. But we will see when he gets it in issue three. So, and which will this cover is going to be for the graphic novel? Oh, okay. Um, so that will be contain issues one through three. So yeah, it's totally going to be fine. Okay, what is this spin thing like? It's kind of a uh, spiral or something, right? Is it? What's that? The thing that and the goggles that and the reference you had. One oh. is one is a lens. Yeah, one is uh, one's a lens, and then the other thing is uh, it's like a, a foc It helps him focus. It helps him. Or is it is it the opposite of a lens? Is it's like a like a, a microscope? Kind of yeah. Like, kind of like you know a a, a uh, what's it called spyglass on his uh, on his eye on his on his on his uh, right eye. Hey, but did you like National Treasure, the movie? I did. I, I thought that was a good. Um, I thought it was a good series. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I um, I enjoyed it a lot. Probably one. I think one of Nicolas Cage's best. Uh, you know, like a perfect role for him. I felt like. Um, I feel like that could have been anybody. Like that's how good that movie was. Is that it? Literally, you could have plopped in any like halfway decent actor, and it would have been a fun movie. Yeah, it could have been like ben, Brendan Fraser or something, just any, any kind of uh, yeah, action I type. Mean, uh, Brendan Fraser would have probably been better. Yeah, all Actually. American kind of. He's got to look like a yeah. all American sort of dude. Yeah, I think Brendan Fraser or is it Brendan or Brandon? Brendan? Brandon? I think it's Brendan. Brendan Fraser. I think he would have actually been a better uh, casting on that. You know who would have been great on that too? It's Paul Rudd. Yep. That so guy's me, good in like, a lot of stuff, though. He's he's he's, yeah. he's he's just a likable type of guy. Do you know what I like about him? <clears throat> he doesn't he doesn't preach to you on uh, when he's not working. You know, like everyone else seems to want to preach, and he's just like, I want to make movies. Yeah, I think he kind of runs like a dork, though. <laughs> Have you ever seen a what? A dork. He's just got, he's got a dorky run. Oh yeah, yeah. Well. So I don't think he's like an athlete. <laughs> he's an actor. He's a thespian. Hey, some of these actors are, you know, kind of wonder, like, you know, Clint Eastwood or something. He was he was built and stuff. Was he was he an athlete? You know, I bet you some of these guys were pretty athletic. Um, Steve McQueen was pretty athletic. Doing what about like right Roger now? Moore or, or uh, Sean Connery? You think they were athletic? Sean Connery was a bodybuilder. Ian Fleming actually didn't like Sean Connery as uh, James Bond because he thought he was too uh, big. Interesting. He's a bodybuilder. Oh. At least that's what I've been told. I could be wrong. Someone could have been blowing smoke up my butt. Well, he looks like you know the picturesque kind of uh, lean man kind of. I would. I would. Think I think uh, David Niven it. was the uh, what up, Katie did. Katie did says hello, gentlemen. Hope y'all oh. doing well. We're doing good, girl. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, Katie did. Did you see? Katie did got a got a um, a puppet. 
Yeah, I saw that. I, <laughs> I saw was like, that. lucky. Oh, I, I saw everyone wants a puppet. That's what it's coming down to now. I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> if you, you get have arrived, if, yeah. It's, it, well, it's just fun. It's 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 like the, the, that stuff is really silly. I hope it, Ethan kind of expands it. You know, not just to to, to Eric July, but does a lot more funny stuff. You know, maybe celebrities or something. It would be really great. I mean, yeah, it's just that Eric July keeps giving him content, so it's <laughs> that like, guy is he is the gift that keeps on giving. Him, good so. lord, dude! It's honestly, it's getting to the point where it's just embarrassing. I'm sorry, I do get tired of talking about it. I'm like, I want to talk about things that I like, yeah. and then he does something else, and you're just like, oh my oh god, my. oh yeah. my god! Rough. But you know, he could he could still kind of uh, pull things out. It, 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 he's what he's really got to do is just not not uh, give give the art chores or something give the art he like he did i think he gave the art direction to kane and white so that's probably going to help and then he's got to he's got to give the the writing chores to you know chuck dixon or something you get he, i don't know why chuck dixon and mike Barron aren't hired as the editors like i heard that, that you know those sisters were were editing mike Barron. Can you can imagine yeah, that that's Matt, crazy. like mike i think Barron that was is, his biggest i think that was his biggest What's the word? You know, it's a bad move. That gaff. Was the worst move. Yeah, that's his biggest gaff. That was, I just, that's where, I think for me, besides the bullying of uh, Nick Ricada, which I thought was really deplorable, his behavior on Nick Ricada's show was really really bad. Um, I think him hiring them was kind of like what sealed it for me, where I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. Yeah, he's just, he's definitely not. Uh, he's just, he's just not really there for for any yeah, cause any, there's no no integrity left when once you nah. well for like someone like me who's been canceled out of hollywood i mean i had my my uh animated cartoon canceled because of my politics uh when i see like places like the daily wire and like eric july hiring leftists i i just gross it, i get sick to my stomach because i'm like you're that's just mess. There's so many people that have been canceled, and they're really talented and really, really good. Despite me, I mean, yeah, I, I take it a little personally, but um, hey, so you don't like my stuff? That's fine, whatever. But like, there's so many talented people, and you're choosing to go with the people that hate us. Yes. I I don't. Well, you know, obviously his his audience is people like like I used to be. I subscribed when I first saw him because I thought, hey, this guy's saying a lot of sensible things, yep. and. Uh, you know he's interesting, but then I tried to listen to him. I couldn't. He just, he he doesn't really have a good, su real substance to his his stuff. Oh, there's it's no not, substance. There's no substance. And, and I just like I don't I don't like this. I, I, so I never really I've, actually I tried I actually tried to listen to. It. I'm like I can't listen to this. There's nothing here. You know. When it comes to economics, he doesn't know what he's talking about because he's actually I don't think he's ever actually read a Thomas Sowell book. I think he just likes Thomas Sowell because <laughs> I mean Thomas Sowell is an impressive guy, and if you just watched extensively like his speeches and and debates um you could learn a lot right but i mean you really do if you really want to like talk economics you really do need to read some of his books and you probably should read you know milton freeman and f.a hayek and those guys too because that's those are the people that thomas soul learned from right um uh, yep. but i don't think he has and it's kind of apparent that or i don't know man it's not like economics is an easy topic to talk about I'll be honest. It's complicated. Yeah. It's not, it's not that simple, yeah. I mean, when people ask me questions, I'm all, hey, why don't you watch this thing? <laughs> like, I can't talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my economics breaks down to stop taking my money. Okay? Can you stop taking my money, please? Thanks. Yeah. And the real minimum wage is zero. Is zero. Yeah, because it, it just again you start you just start messing with stuff. It's like the the economy will take care of this stuff. It it fixes itself. It's it you don't have to worry about it. There's actually a really good um, man. I'll have to find it. I'm gonna find it. Marcus, are you in the private? Is Marcus in the private chat? Uh, no, no. Oh. Oh, by the way, I, I'm looking at the chat here now. I, I Katie, I, I just wanted to mention. Yeah, Katie's the person that, that brought you and I together. We're here right now because yeah. of Katie. So thank yep. you, Katie. Yeah, Katie is the reason. But there is a hip-hop song out there called Keynes versus Hayek, 
it's a series. It's like one and two. If you ever want to like get an intro level, uh, level, uh, like uh, introduction to economics, just watch these hip hop videos. They're so good and actually quite educational. And that's basically the level of my economics expertise. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I have a level of economics. I just know that government historically can't be trusted. No. But that's the thing. These hip-hop songs actually kind of explain it. It's like, you know, it's it's basically Keynesian economics versus, um, you know, Austrian and that explanation of, you know, do you want plans? You know, do you want to let the individual plan for themselves or do you want to plan for the individual? Because that's really, that's, that's genuinely... The, Economics is simp it can be boiled down to that. Do you allow people to plan for themselves, work for themselves, you know, or do you do you want to control people? Because that's every economic philosophy breaks down to those categories. Hey, did you ever listen to? I used to listen to a lot of talk radio, and I listened to Dennis Prager. Did you ever listen to him much? Or I I used to listen to Dennis Prager a lot when I was single. Uh, a little bit when I first got married. I haven't listened to him much anymore. I just haven't listened to talk radio anymore. I I, I listen to you know the uh, the YouTube stuff. Yeah, I'm mainly YouTube as well. I, th I think it's get away from politics because it's depressing the hell out of me. I know that's true too. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think the thing is for me with with politics, I kind of know, you know, it's it's like you just basically go, like you said, don't take my money. You know, it's yeah. like I don't trust them to do anything right, and. Uh, and I don't want to take my money, and that's it. Okay, done. Yeah. But I've also realized that, like, and this is depressingly, I think this is depress depressingly true, is that there are two, it, when it comes to life, there are, there's two places of existence in life. And that is you are either conquered or you are being conquered. Uh, there is no <laughs> just leave me alone and let me do my thing. I mean, I used to be super libertarian, but like the more that I'm like reading history and like just seeing how life is, it's like you're either being conquered and you look at like the left, they've conquered Hollywood, they've conquered education, you know, or you're or you're conquering. And I think that like liberty people need to kind of realize that like, you know what, we got to take some territory back. You know, we got to. Mm -hmm get back out there in the entertainment spectrum we got to get back out there educating and all that because hey, there's a guy in the chat uh derek i'm doing a uh a uh commission for him so i did part of it on online and, and i haven't touched done too much with it like i said i got just swamped with you know, my regular work my advertising stuff and then you know comic book stuff i'm, I'm nearly done with uh most of my uh, commissions and stuff so and uh, and that would be on it. So uh, it's all your fault, uh, you know, uh, Sean, uh, that I'm working on this cover, and I, I should be working on my commission. Oh <laughs> uh, well, you know. So Derek, if you're there, you, you can blame Sean for this. <laughs> Look, I need a cover for my graphic novel, bro, and I wanted to hire Dan Lawless because I like his style. Okay, okay, okay. Speaking of, you can get issue one now. On Fun My Comic or Indiegogo, it's called Silence Do Good, and it's really good. And maybe one day, Katie will read it. <laughs> Not that she's busy or anything, trying to wrangle kids, uh, be a wife, and uh, have a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I, you know, all this stuff, I mean, I, I'm, uh, you know, my kids are gone and stuff. It's like, <laughs> I just, I can't imagine trying to do this stuff oh, God, um, right. with the family. I uh, just you know, I don't know how Ethan does it. I don't know how, you know, it looks like, I mean, you don't see too much of Dan Fragg. I know he's got young kids, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking of people with young kids, like, you can't, you know. No. Even, with, even Billy, you know, I can see he's, his kids are still around and they're, uh, so he's, you know, he's going to this game, he's going to that game and all that stuff. And you just, there's no way, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I have, I only have dogs and I'm like, <laughs> oh. I gotta work. I don't want to stream. I'm trying to figure out how I can do both, but I can't, I don't really like drawing on stream yet. I don't feel comfortable. I'm an I'm an artist. I'm I'm emotional and you know insecure. And I don't want you to see it until it's done and pretty. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, for me, it, it's it's something that I mean, it makes a difference if you know ten go back ten years. 
and I wasn't, you know, wasn't as confident. Really, it, it's something that when you've been drawn for, um, for thirty-seven years professionally, yeah, <laughs> it's like you kind of know, you know, what you start to kind of know what the, what you're doing. Yeah, and and that's what. Uh, okay, so this is this is looking pretty good actually. I'm, I'm, I think for me, it's like I haven't been able to draw every day for a living i've always always a create i was a cre art director and i was a creative uh, director so i wasn't just i wasn't illustrating i was you know doing all other kinds of stuff i was writing a script i was working on a movie poster so i was working with photography and you know photo manipulation and photoshop and um you know and there was times there i wouldn't draw for months on end and it it, it kind of killed my soul and then since leaving hollywood and leaving entertainment advertising going back to drawing i'm like dude i love it but man i feel like i'm not there where i i, I want to be as an artist you know like mm -hmm. i still like because when i was working at disney i was drawing every day i wasn't i was a i was drawing all the time and i was taking drawing classes and i'm like i want to get back to that you know and i'm i think i'm like getting close i feel like i'm getting close but you know what it is you're a, we're all perfectionists too so it's like i always kind of hate my work <laughs> I just oh, yeah. look at it and I'm like, I just see all the flaws. I, I know, I know. It's it's a tough thing, but it's like you know, the process of getting good at drawing. It's like you first when you're starting off, everything stinks and everything's a stinker, and then you just do you do one or two that aren't a stinker, and then you start, and yep. slowly less and less stinkers until. You can, but I still I still do bombs, you know. I still I. Still, Everyone does. I think so the worst part was being 18 and getting a job at Disney because that's probably the worst place you will ever want to work as an artist is Disney because you're going to get so abused. And then you're going to be working for guys with, like, the biggest egos and the, and the thinnest skin. And you will do a drawing, and they will – they'll draw over it, mm -hmm. not because it need, they need to improve it, because they can't tell you, like, where you went wrong. They're just like, oh, I just didn't like it. And you're like, wow, really? You're that insecure that you have to like draw over everyone. And I would see other artists that were I thought were better than me, and they would just get these drawovers, and you're just like, it looks worse. It looks way mm -hmm. worse. What? It, what? <laughs> but those guys had to do it, man. They had to do it. Yeah, you got to when you're when you're doing a, a, a drawover, you got to really communicate, and that's another problem too. Is the we're all pretty introverted and. Just learning to communicate, and, and it, it's just, you know, that's not easy too. Yeah. So, yep. All this stuff has to be learned. Oh, you know, I was, I was a, your typical super shy kid, you know, and I had to try to come out of that shell, you know. I'm still trying to do that. <laughs> yeah. But I do, I do better on, you know, like the, I, you know, I was mentioned to you, Sean, like, I was like, no way am I going to ever get on YouTube. There's no way, you know? And, uh, but it's easier for me because I, I, it's I mean, if I, like, I'm, especially I'm talking to somebody, it's just me in my room, you know, and I yeah. don't really see the audience. If I was looking at everybody right now, I'd be like, uh, <laughs> uh I can't see it, but yeah. I can't see them. So I'm all right. Yeah. Plus, then also just yeah, it's, it was it's just one or two people you're talking to. I've always been fine with that, and you know, I'm very good at communicating with somebody uh, individually. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's not a problem. Yeah, I always prefer um, a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one or a you know a few people. When it starts getting like six or seven, I'm like ah. Yeah, much. well, you know, I, I, sometimes I you know, like the Ethan show or something. You go on that, and it's like. And all these guys are quick and they're clever and they're fast and they're funny. And I've never been quick. <laughs> I'll think of something funny maybe once in a while, you know. <laughs> but these guys think of something funny every five seconds, you know. Yeah, but you're the Bob Ross of comic skates, so you just do you. Yeah, yeah, that's all I can do is sit back and just, you, you know, know, try to make my voice <laughs> decent. <laughs> I mean, plus you you have the best camera you're you, you know you're using your you're, you have the good camera and you got the best lighting so you're already ahead of the pack yeah I, yeah I mentioned that I tried to tell these guys you guys got to work on your sets a little bit you know your, your set designs 
because they're you're, you're kind of competing with you see all these other these nft guys and stuff they look good even if they don't i said we know more than they know but they look better than no, we do know you know they yeah, they they're... they look like they know more than we do you know it's like we you got to kind of try to look like you are you know what you're talking about right if if, if you uh if you kind of set it up and because i feel like when it, this just with this you know simple setup that i have here um you know i'm i'm painting with color i got red you know blue and then yellow over here and then i got lights on me and stuff and i'm i'm i did i worked on that as you i think i mentioned you you know we're off screen and we're, yeah. we're like it takes some time to you know to to work out the light levels and stuff like that but it's no different than doing a painting or illustration i'm mm -hmm. doing exactly the same thing i'm painting with light mm -hmm. yeah yeah right, oh oh uh rex is here rex christensen is here oh what up dude okay I'm, i gotta check in this uh, check the chat so uh, Polly Art says, I hear that, Dan. I can chat with people a little, but myself with an audience? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Tis not easy. Okay, let's see what... Uh... Make up by being super awesome? Oh. <laughs> All right. That's a good plan. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Just be oh, be great, like Eric would say. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do, man. That's what we're trying to do. Old Thirty Five says, "Toughen up, Buttercup." What does that mean? I I I, I, I lose track of some of the stuff. I'm not following it exactly. Oh, but it's good up, advice Buttercup. in yeah, general. Yeah, it's always it's, good advice. Toughen it's up, always Buttercup. Always good advice. Because no, in at general. the end of the day, no one cares. Like, just do better, you know. And that's like, I think the lesson yeah. I always try to like part to like younger artists and stuff is like i only say what i say not because i'm like oh it was me it's just like no it's just how i am you know i'm perfectionist i hate my work half the time and other half the time i think i'm the best um but it's like you just got to keep you got to draw through it right i mean you just got to keep going and you can't yeah no one's gonna care you know no they're gonna, only as a matter of fact care. i think these drawing sh uh things are kind of helpful because when people see you make mistakes they see oh this guy is human he's not oh, it's, yeah, yeah. It, he's he's think you can see the process you're thinking oh yeah. okay i i, I mold it uh that arm looks a little weird you know and you don't think they're they're doing all that they you don't think they're going oh that, that's that's stupid you know uh <laughs> but they are no exactly and i think one of the key key lessons too for a lot of people is like how to like hear um criticism correctly you know like there's ways to listen to criticism and then there's ways to not listen to criticism and not all criticism is valid. Uh, however, um, you need to learn how to listen to criticism, you know, and you also need to learn how to listen to bad criticism and then not get all butthurt about it and just be like, okay, I don't agree. Bye. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Let's see the claws. I looked at the reference. It wasn't too, you didn't you didn't go too deep in on the claws, so I probably have some leeway to kind of make uh, it up a bit. Oh yeah, no, I mean they're that's that was the rough. Those were the rough um, thumbs. So yeah, you can definitely. I haven't I haven't gone to I gotten to those uh, panels yet, other than thumbing them out. Cause those I'm saying because the... it's a, you know when you do a a, a piece of artwork. You are kind of doing it in your style. It does go through a little bit of a, a looking glass, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yep. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out my, I want to get my layers here because I want to go, I want to put all these guys on one layer of people. That's that. No, there's not. Polyart says there's also nothing wrong with getting a second opinion. And you are correct. I got a second opinion about. Issues one, two, and three for Silence Do Good from Dan, uh, like two weeks ago, and he pointed out that I had made a few errors. I literally broke the 180 rule, and I didn't even realize I did it because I was uh, I redesigned a, pa a, a couple panels for the for the balloons uh, for the dialogue balloons because I, I did a lot of graphic design. 
So I was like, oh, this will look cool. And I wasn't thinking about the 180 rule. And he pointed out, hey, you broke the 180 rule here, you know, in a couple of places. And I was like, that is so noobish and embarrassing. So then I had to go back in and redraw everything. <laughs> you know what, though? Uh, it's like it super I, helpful. I just I just finished uh, Ghost of Matakuma Key. Great art, great story. But I did notice, you know, Graham was breaking that rule. And I was oh, like, Graham, bro? Graham. Oh, man. Dude, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Because yes. you think about other things. I see it all the time. It's, it's, you, you think know. about other things. You're like, oh, it would be cool if the um, sound effects, you know, went this way. And, you know, you're designing a panel. And then yep. you're Because, like, when, you, when I was drawing storyboards, it was, it was just, you know, whatever the format was. 4 by 5 16 by 9 And it was just rectangles, right? You would have, you know, six on a page. And you draw your thing. So you, it was real easy to see not breaking the 180 rule. Um, and then when you're doing like a designing a panel, it's for whatever reason, you know, mm. yep. You're trying to squeeze together and it's yeah. all, it's like a bunch of pieces and then it's, but it's one piece, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that is complicated. Just funny though. I mean, it's just funny. Like when you sent me that, I was like, son of a bee, son of a bee. <laughs> But that's but, that second pair of eyes, you know, that, yes. that sort of thing. Okay. No, I mean, that was, I was thankful. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I mean, I was, I was embarrassed a little bit, you know, <laughs> your pride. Uh, but also was super stoked because, good God, I would not have wanted to go to print like that, you know? Um, right. So, yeah, dude, I was super thankful and still am that you took the time to, to even, you know, take a look and, and let me know. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, with my attitude, it's, it's, it's one art, you know, it's like you just, you you want all the art all the books to be the best they can be and that's you know i i enjoy that i want to see that so you know doing the videos and stuff the tutorials like i, I want to, i i want these books that i read to be you know as good as they can yeah. be so no it's like that's why i'm you know i mike Barron's helping me with the the story you know i like go to him and get his advice on what i need to do and when we were, when I was doing the thumbnails, I had him take a look at some stuff. And I, on one of the pages, there was just way too much dialogue. But everything that was being said needed to be said. So I was like, F it, dude. We're adding in another spread, you know, because we're mm -hmm. going to show, we're going to show, not tell. Um, and so, you know, I ended up adding two pages and stuff. But again, you know, being able to, the, the great thing about comic skate is like having access and being able to work with guys like you and Mike Barron and, you know, all the other people that I've been able to meet, um, who are so eager to help a guy like me who, I mean, I spent 20, 20 plus years in, you know, entertainment marketing advertising. So this is my first book, you know, and it's like, it's been great. Yep. Yep. And, and it's like, that's the thing is that, that what I don't know is a lot of other things and I'm learning about, whoops, where'd I go? Um, you know, I've learned so much just, just, I mean, live streaming and stuff yeah. and, and you know, oh, what software do I use? All that kind of stuff. So many things that I don't know either. And I had to learn from these guys and I, I'm learning from watching these people, people show and how they deliver their dialogue. And then you got to try to figure out how to be yourself. That's you know mm -hmm. tricky too. So just be yourself, Dan, just be Bob Ross of comedy. <laughs> Don't be yourself. Be Bob Ross. Uh, yeah. You know, one of my uh, uh, a relative of mine was saying, uh, you know, you look a little like Bob Ross, you know? Like when I put the wig on and stuff. Oh, uh, well, everyone looks like Bob Ross with the wig. Well, my face in particular, because it's kind of roundish a little bit, and uh, it just it, it just looks kind of similar. Like we have similar faces. So I'm wondering if, uh, you know, I might be, uh, you know, Bob Ross's illegitimate son or something. You know? it's good, that could be the possibility. You know, it could be a possibility, yeah. My mom went to some art art, art uh, seminar and stuff, and the uh, one thing led to another. And <laughs> <laughs> so, Paulus Art says, "Paulus rhymes with lawless." By the way, I know the spelling looks French or something. <laughs> and then uh, he says, "CG has been invaluable. I'm getting insight and connections. It's great. Yeah, it really is, Paulus." Um, yeah, people really are giving. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I mean, yeah. obviously, the the biggest one of all is Ethan giving uh, his audience, in essence, yep. to people. I mean, uh, don't get the hate. I really don't get the hate. I, I, mean, I get the hate I from. I get the hate from the left because they're so threatened. Because really, at the end of the day, like they're threatened 
by someone that is charismatic and has influence over other people because they want they don't want our message of you know America being awesome liberty and like hey don't be uh, a fascist you know don't be a bad guy from WW2 um, and so they, they they have to try to isolate someone like an Ethan because they're so uh, infectious and um, and if infectious meaning they have an infectious personality and charismatic they don't want they don't they want that person isolated so that's why they go after him but the a lot of the infighting against him is just weird yeah that's that's a little weird because i, I would think that if you're helped you would you would be so only grateful but it's not the case apparently yeah. again i think the ego stuff kicks in yeah but I, he think, seems think, like the I'm type of guy that this, if you were actually genuinely hurt by something he, he did you could actually maybe be like Hey, whenever you have a chance, could we chat? You know, like, and not, and maybe don't like blow his phone up or whatever, and then just have like a, hey, you know, yeah. when you said that, that really, that bummed me out. I, yeah, could I, you, or yeah, could you like, kind of, if you're, yeah, you like could it. say, hey, that's a soft spot for me if you don't yeah. mind, you know, just or something like that, uh, or could you back off a little bit on that? And these guys would do it, you know, they would listen. They're, they're, yeah, I think so. You know, but no, there's no attempt to even do that. Just it's, a, it's just like, how dare you? Yeah, yeah, that's offended. How dare you try to be funny and like you know, pearl, pearl, chop, say, bust my chops? You know, pearl cup clutching. You know, that yeah. Kind of stuff. Like, did like you what you said? Well, he's supposed to say. He's supposed to be. It's just, you, it's like, all thing is, it's a, it's, a, like, it's a, it's a, you know, roasting stuff. It's, it's, that's what people love. It's a dunk tank at a carnival. Like, I can understand maybe like the women getting it, like getting butt hurt but like the dudes i'm like did you not have brothers did you not grow up with buddies like yeah. did you not hang out in the yard with your buddies and bust each other's chops like all recess long like what is going on yeah well you know uh some I mean, it is a, your circumstances too i think a lot of women who have um had sibling had brothers or women who are married something they can they, they already know we're guys yeah are, they're a bunch of idiots <laughs> don't really care you know yeah. I mean, there is they, they know enough there. to not take yeah. it seriously, you know. There's, there's, there are some busting of chops sometimes that I see, and I'm just like, really? You don't? You, you think that was funny? Like, I don't understand why you think that was funny. But that's usually the people that are the most sensitive are the ones doing that kind of busting of chops. Yeah. That's a, you got if you get online, you gotta be ready. And actually, I think it's actually good for an artist to, to uh, make be made fun of and you know joke make and when. They, they call you, you know, whatever they, whatever they come up with. It, it's that's good. You want to be humble. You know, you don't. Yeah. You, as soon as you get too egotistical, then you stop growing as an artist. And you gotta, you gotta be humble. It's good for you. You don't. You want to be, you know, really connected with your audience and who, you, so that you know. Yeah. You, you gotta be just like them because we are comic book fans. That's how we started, and, and we got to maintain that if you want to. Because when you're drawing this stuff, you're you're responding to it as a comic book fan. Mm-hmm. And you want to be able to to um, maintain that, I would think, you know. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. So I'm not the best tech guy, but <laughs> when I scan this, uh, print this out, I'll, I'll spend more time on the developing it, you know. But I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's okay. What are you talking like about? The, the 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 tech here. This. Oh. Uh, yeah, but you know, honestly, too, it's like simple's good. You don't have to like do all the nuts and bolts all the time. You know what I mean? Like, you could handle it like Doc Ox claws. You know, like uh, doesn't necessarily need to be. I mean, you do you though. That looks good. I mean, that looks good. I think that looks great. I don't think that looks bad at all. Okay. I think it actually looks really, really good. I want to see Ben's shoe though, so I got to do something with this. Either make it smaller or or turn it or something. Uh, Katie Dids channel says, "Dan, I want to let you know that your idea will and hopefully come true one day, and that it is Comic Gates Queens. It'll be a while, but I plan to make it happen. Oh. Can there I be go. in Comic Gates Queens?" No. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. We yeah, already, we got Marvel queens already. Because here's here's my thing, Katie did. Okay, here's my issue with with women. All right. <laughs> okay. uh, and I no, I enjoy Katie. I think Katie's like one of the best people. Um, oh, she's great. She's so yeah. great to, great to me. Very lucky. So like, Comic Gate Kings lets will let women in, right? But then if you do Comic Gate Queens, 
do guys get let in? Because women usually are like, we want to be let in the guys club. And then when they have their own club, they're like, no men allowed. And you're like, wait a second. Wait a yeah. second. That doesn't right. seem fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they, they, you, you just got to work on that lisp and you can get in there. You know, can, can I be in comic <laughs> queen? I'm a comic skate queen. Oh, don't clip that, please. <laughs> it's going to get clipped now. <laughs> yeah, the internet. Eh, whatever. I don't care. Who cares? Actually, if you get a clip, that's, you, you should be so lucky because that's... You know, yes. People that, don't care until you get... Exactly. You know, until you get, you know, arrive. And then, so if you get clipped and exactly. people are, are harassing you a little bit, then you're like, oh, I finally... <laughs> Oh, dude, Thank I mean, goodness. in my 20s, I wore glam rock makeup. Trust me, I'm fine. I'm totally <laughs> fine. I do not give a crap. Go for it. Try to embarrass me. Good luck. Yeah, I've already done true. it to myself. Yeah, that's a trick. Yeah. Well, isn't that the politicians do that sort of thing, too, when they just they release something, that, like something that's a scandal or something? They go out of the way actually releasing it to get it so they can control it, you know, control the flow. They release it like on a Sunday or something, you know, so that uh, they know what's you know when, when it's going to hit. Yeah, yeah. Who's the best at tech? Who's the comics? best at tech? I don't know. I am definitely not one of those guys that enjoy. <laughs> I'm doing a sci-fi comic book, mm -hmm. and I'm tech drawing. Tech is not my. <laughs> To do. <laughs> I'm like a much more of a fantasy guy, but I just had to tell the story. I had the story, and again, we were we sold this as a Saturday morning like animated short, like 22 minute animated uh, show to a studio that ended up going out of business. And I just thought it was too fun of a story not to tell. So I was like, I got to do this as a comic book. So that's why I'm doing it. And I don't do the sci-fi thing, I think, very well. Uh, is this the one that was then the one that was canceled? No, this is not the one that was canceled. Okay. Um, I've been able to sell three shows in my life, and two of those shows were to a studio that went out of business. <laughs> um, and then one was to a major Hollywood studio that canceled it after a year of development because we were three white executive uh, conservative Christians. And you said something the, about church. Yeah, one of the guys. They were like, "Oh, how'd you guys meet? Like, how do you guys all know each other?" And then one of the guys stupidly said. A I will say, uh, he was all, oh, we met at church. And I was like, son of a B, dude, we're so screwed. And literally, like a month later, our show got canceled. Um, and I was like, that's nice. And it was also because one of the main producers had just got outed as, like, super hardcore Trump conservative. And Trump literally got elected, like, a uh -huh. week ago. They wanted heads. It's like, it, that's yeah, what happened it to was, Ethan. It was, it was, yeah, it was inevitable. I was like, damn it. I was so close, guys. Yeah, it was about a little bat that was afraid of the dark. Oh, that's a great. That sounds. Really it was cute. for pre K. It was really cute. Yeah. Hey, John, what's up? John says hello, salty. Uh, John's just joining us. Thanks for coming, dude. Yeah, hi, John. It's uh, I haven't seen him in a while. He's usually popping in in uh, Shant's channel and stuff like that. I see him there. So, Wait, there's I'm, a there's a channel that does pitch meetings. It's called Pitch Meeting. Hmm, I'll have to check that out. I uh, I have been on several Hollywood pitches, man. It's a grind, dude. And I actually got learned a lot from a, a executive producer that created Danny Phantom and uh, Fairly Odd Parents because he was the executive producer on my on my show that got canceled. Uh, and he taught us a lot because he had been pitching for years and years and years. We got really good at it. Um, but it's alas not to be in Hollywood because they hate me. I'm too white, too Christian, too conservative, and too straight. Yeah. If only you had one of those things, <laughs> I, I, you could give in on yeah. it. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, uh, Katie's talking about the, uh, putting together the, the, the women thing. And, uh, I, I remember, did you ever try to watch simcast that's one thing I, I i i like these ladies and they're, they're really nice but man when you get a lot of women together it's it's just tough it's tough to listen to. i'm just gonna say men need women and women need men and that's what i'm gonna leave it at katie did okay 
they're wonderful ladies, but I, I just, you know, I just can't relate, you know, like, like, like especially if they start talking about shoes or something, like, what am I supposed to do, you know? So Katie did, uh, that <laughs> book actually is what got picked up as the show. So the book is on Amazon. It's digital only right now. We have plans in the future to, after I get do good done, we're going to re-release that book with new art, all new illustrated, probably a bit of a new story. It's called Kiko the Brave Little Bat, and it's available on Amazon and Apple iTunes, and it's animated with a mini game and narrated, uh, so it's an audiobook. It's really fun if you ever wanted to check that out. I can send it to you, Katie did, but actually, I want to do a Kickstarter for the for the printed book because the artwork for the the artwork then is not as good as the artwork is now because that book is very old and i was a very different artist because i was very young yeah i I, uh it's funny to look at my old stuff i wonder if i actually have i got some old old super want to see like if i can find a super old conan um That'd be kind of funny. We're talking pre-comic books, Marvel Comics. So, 80... I'm going to send it to Katie Did right now. 82. It's super cute. Here, let's find it. You pull it up, dude. Pull up the Conan art. <laughs> you're, gonna just, you're gonna laugh, but it's. I mean, it's got the funny thing about it. It doesn't have the um, doesn't have the construction correct, but it does have the energy, and it does ha- it does show I'm thinking three dimensionally. So let me let me close some of these windows. I'm getting really a, a lot of open here. Let's see. Present. I wonder if if this one uh, one goes. No, I don't want a video file. Forget that. No, you don't want a video file. We want to see pictures. Show us the pictures. It doesn't have a. Uh... Oh, well, I guess I gotta just do it one at a time. You can't do two more than two things shared. Oh no, Streamyard's okay. lame like that. Okay, there it is. You accursed dogs never get past the son of <laughs> Chimerian. Um, your structure's not that bad. Oh yeah, the neck a little bit. Yeah, it's just it's a it's an amateur kind of a. Uh, you know, the face is great though. Your structure on the face is great, but yeah. But you can see I'm starting to think. I'm I'm thinking three dimensionally. I'm sh- yeah. the, you know it is shaded pretty well. The mouth is bad and all that kind of stuff. But this is really really beginning stuff for me. But look at that that that. Uh, that sword um, looks great. Sword looks fantastic. Like shit, yeah. I can't do. <laughs> I gotta bring that sword out. Bring it back. Dude, it's got all the engravings and. It's still a great. I mean, dude, this is miles ahead of most people. So, but yeah, we're our own worst critics, right? Yeah. Let me see if I can find. Uh, there's more to this story. There's more to the story. Yeah, Actually, isn't that second... great, John? That that detail on that hill is sexy. It's very sexy. Okay, let me get rid of this for a second. Katie did. I just DM'd you on Twitter's uh, two links. One has got the book, and the other is the new artwork and the pitch bible for the the show that we had sold through and developed. Let me see what the uh, if I can pull up the uh, like four at once because there's, there's a four page um, story to it. I don't know. I don't. They're not going to come up in order, but I can share them as as the uh, one thing here and. Okay, so there's the there's the original that you saw. Then actually, I think the I think that switches to this one. Mm. Look, I'm breaking the 180 degree rule. 
I went from I went from looking. He's looking the. Uh, oh yeah. This is before I I got that little lesson from yeah. Rich, Rich Buckler, you know. Oh okay, so that's like the next pan. Is that the next panel? The next panel, yeah. This is I did, I did two splashes apparently. Yeah. And then. So yeah, he's looking. Well, no, you don't. You didn't break it here because look, he looks back. So he's looking left. He's looking left, and then he looks. He's got, clearly got the guy in his hand, and then he looks back to the to his left. I mean, he's, so he's looking right. I should say, looking right, looking right. Yeah. These two down here are fine. You know, they're they're yeah. And then done. what? And then the next frame is. And then and then like, this is the end page. Well, yeah, he's looking back. Yeah, that's okay. Actually, I yeah. did it right. That, yeah, that's, no. that's that's all oh, correct. That is all correct. Yeah. See a second pair of eyes to talk you back from the ledge of being <laughs> unkind to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. This is so hokey. What's it, it says? I am Shazar, your executioner. <laughs> when were these? When did you do these? How old were you? I don't know. I had to be eighteen or something. Like you know, I was pretty pretty young. Uh, I'm thinking ni 19, 18, 19 or something <sighs> like that. Where where were you getting your anatomy from though? Your anatomy is actually for an eighteen year old is phenomenal. I I was I mean I was drawing comics before that you know like just mm. I, I was just. I love Frazetta. I loved, you know, the thing is, when you grew up reading the comics I did, when you had Basema, Gil Kane, mm -hmm. uh, Gene Cole, those guys, their anatomy was really quite good. Mm -hmm. So learning from that, looking at them, it was kind of easier to learn the, the anatomy. Then I'm looking at bodybuilder books and all that kind of stuff too, mm -hmm. to try to pin it down. And, and you don't want to necessarily look at bodybuilder stuff, but um, I, want to see, I want to see what they actually say here. Hang on a second. Let's, let's see what the what my brilliant dialogue is at this day. The Outlander has traversed the holy ground in the name of the mighty Chesser. He must die. Now that's just that sounds like a Jack Kirby uh, cover. You know what I mean? That's awesome though. But dude, look, I, you did this at eighteen. That is crazy. Look at that shading, he, man. I, I, I what's he saying here? I know of no holy ground, you accursed dogs. So he doesn't. He's is the you know different religion, obviously. Conan has. <laughs> Shazar, no, you, wait, Shaz, Sharzax, that's what it's, Sharzax. <laughs> were you using any photo reference at all, or were you just drawn out of your just head? Just drawing it. Wow. Who is this Sharzax? He can taste my axe, too. I believe they refer to me. I am Sharzax, your executioner. Bah, Chrome can have you this day, demon. We shall see, barbarian. Look at ended only four pages. <laughs> that is so great, man. Oh, crazy! I was a Conan nut uh, from the start, you know. Yeah, that's so good, man. Okay, coming back the. Uh... Where's the? Uh... Here it is. Okay. Now, it's interesting when you work on line like this you have to arrange the your how you arrange your the box of the uh of the photoshop thing it fills the space or not fills the space but try to kind of squish it like this and then it starts to you know you want because i want to i want this to be as large as possible so you got to squish squish the dimensions until you get to you know get to the very top and bottom of it so it's as big as you can possibly see when you're, when you're drawing online. So yeah, this uh, this tech isn't bad. Could be worse as a, <laughs> a phrase I often mutter while I'm drawing. <laughs> no, nah, dude, I honestly that you, you at eighteen is better than. I'm talking about this tech here. Oh, the tech? No, it's it's looking good, dude. It's looking really good. All right. Let's see. Where's it? What's the? Uh, can't check on these comments here. Oh, I'm way behind. Oh, sorry. I'm drawing too today. I'm not. I'm being a bad helper. But I think there's like a conversation happening that doesn't even con really concern us. <laughs> That's fine. Katie said she loves Simcast. Yeah. 
<laughs> what is Simcast? Well, it has a bunch of girls on it, and you know, simping, of course, is what the guys, you know, they, you know, simping for the girls, whatever that, you know, how that, what that means, basically. Yeah. So it's you know a bunch of girls so that all the guys can come in and you know give them their praise, whatever. It's kind of fun. Oh. So it, it's 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 got about it it, it it changes too. It's 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 arrangement, but you got Chrissy Mayer on there mainly. I think I think it might be run by Chrissy Mayer. And then she's got some friends and Anna's often on there. Um, I forget who else, but they're they're you know they they chat it up and it's kind of fun and uh, so it's great. That's cool. But sometimes it gets pretty girly. <laughs> yeah, uh, Paul's is saying it's a soft spot for religious folk. Well, you know, it's a, that's the thing about religion is, to me, it's like even if you believe it or don't believe it, understanding what the the role it played in the formation of the country is yeah, just right? I huge. Mean... So, you know, understanding that is 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 important, and uh, you know, it, it it's. Uh... See, for me, I'm not like the funny thing was is like. I'm not even religious, that religious. Like I'm more I right. if I was gonna describe myself, I would describe myself more as like a deist uh Christian, like type, That's like that's know? what uh Thomas Jefferson was. You know, and so I'm like I'm not even this big like religious guy, but I'm also at the same time realize the importance that the church has upon a society yeah. and a community and um yeah, and that the moral lessons that you learn from it actually really do a lot to help you not be a garbage. Well, well I think actually, you know, I, was, I remember listening once to this, uh, you've heard of Dinesh D'Souza, I think, right? Yeah, I love Dinesh D'Souza. And he was talking about how, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense, you have, uh, when Christianity came along, you know, before Christianity, you had the, 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 the priest in the temple and the church, and it was the government, it was the same thing. Yeah. And then, and then Jesus comes along and says, "Your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're self-governing, and yeah. that's really the basis of the beginning of the thinking of the self-governing attitude. Yes. You know, you hold, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal by, and endowed by their Creator with certain alienable rights, and that's that's really the basis of it. You you, you have individual rights is because you have you know you have you are a walking, talking church. You are you are yes. self-governing." And so, and then we, we were saying to me about Ben Franklin saying some, something to the fact that, hey, once if you people can't govern themselves, that's when everything falls apart. You have to self-govern. You know? Yeah, that actually, well, yeah, well, it was uh, Sam Adams who said. Sam Adams. No, I'm sorry, correction. John Adams who said, um, you know, that our system of government was for a moral people. Right. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, it's like anything. When you when the family falls apart, when the that's the, the underpinnings of society, all hell breaks loose. Yep. Because it doesn't matter what your system of government is, it's not going to work if people will not. No. You know, act like human beings. I just I just saw this video. I don't know if, if you may have seen this one. Of those, the guy punching that lady on the church steps, just oh. knocking her over. Like, oh my goodness. It's yeah, just, and a society that doesn't punish criminals is not a society at all. It's the law of the yep. jungle at that point, and that's kind of where we're headed. But that's I think that's by design because that's kind of like how the Democrats ran the, the slave plantation is very much like they run the urban cities nowadays. I mean, the, the Democrats haven't changed. Like, people say, oh, the party switched and everything like that. No, they haven't switched at all. Um, and the Democrats are running the same game they ran in the 1800s. It's just they've evolved it and they've expanded it. Because uh, it was the, the the housing for for the slaves was very similar to the projects or the you know the, the urban areas where there was crime was allowed because it kind of kept everyone in check. Yeah, that sounds pretty awful. And made sure that they stayed reliant, they stayed uneducated, like the whole nine. Like it's like, you know, it's yeah. Uh. Yep. Very, very uh, uh, sad if they if they achieve these things because it's like you want you want you want to keep it a country that people are trying to get to. You know? Yeah, man. I always say the D. There's going to be some point where people we're going to be like people are going to flee this country if if you don't you know if you don't uh, keep intact the things that people were attracted to be here in the first place, which were freedom. You know, freedom is so important. 
Freedom of speech, especially. Well, I mean, the, just the first, you know, the the uh, the Bill of Rights. I mean, that is essential to um, liberty, right there. Absolutely. All right, that's I'm actually got a you know good bit into this. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna close this up, but. Uh, Got, a, good, got pretty far in uh, farther than I, than I thought. Drawn to the, the, these guys too. I think they need work. Once I flip it, I'm, I know I'm going to cringe because yeah. I, I know they're not symmetrical. So actually, not that bad. But it's not that bad, dude. I think the only one, the only claw that needs a little work is that on the left one now. The middle one. Um, this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I might have to one. turn that a little bit more. Turn yeah. Yes, yeah, just kind of make it spread out more yes i'm i'm trying to fit it in you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah yeah so i may actually have to make these a little bit small i'm not sure what to do with them but you know I, what I just need a little bit of help so how many claws do they have in the in the thumbnail what is it uh, there's only three claws oh no there's four there's four claws is it four okay yeah there's four claws. let me look for this story here Yeah, I didn't actually. I didn't. I don't know if I. Uh, I got to look at the new one that you sent me. I, I didn't even download them. Stuck looking at the old one here. Okay. Well, I, I don't see it, but that's good. Yeah, John says American experiment equals self governance. That's right, brother. Yeah. And then Paula says, "China, China was founded on unity, which is why they're communists now." Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is there is unity, right? Like the in the Bible, they talk Christ talks about unity, but it's a very different unity. And it's yeah, United unity States, of, we are unified as well. You know. No, it's a unity of um, not not commonality, but unity of spirit. So it's like kind of like the United States, you know, it's like every state has their own like yeah. governance and everything. But then there's like, there's like a very few things that you like unify under. And that was kind of the concept of like Christianity where it's like, Oh, you might have certain traditions cause you guys are Greek and you guys are Jewish and you guys are Roman. Um, but our commonality is like these five things and then we'll be unified on those five things and then everything else you kind of like, and it's like Paul's letters. It's like, you guys do this and they do that. Um, so there's unity there, but like, yeah, like it's, it's conformity that China is under, right? Their unity is like conform. And that's kind of yep. the way the, the American left is. They're very, you must think this way, act this way. You can't say these things. You can't think these things. You can't vote this way. Otherwise we'll cancel you and try to, you know, make you end yourself. Oh yeah, exactly. Like, like they you know? just did that poor man, but yeah. Cause they're demons. Yeah. They're demons. And what's the, that's what I like about you know the whole crowdfunding thing too. The comic skate stuff. It's like, it's there's it, really never been a movement like this where you it's it's very much like the founding fathers because we're 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 owning your own IP, own IP is the same thing as individual property rights. You know we fought this yeah. whole country. We fought this a revolutionary war for individual property rights, and that's what we're we're kind of doing that in comics, which is really fascinating to see that happen. Yeah. Ooh, I think I'm so, almost done. You want to see an what American I did real quick movement? We, go? It's, it's, we should. We should. I, I, I put up a post one, so it's just with the, you know, the, the what, what, you know, the patriotic guys standing there with the muskets and stuff. And I talked about Comics Gate, and boy, did I get, <laughs> I got <laughs> hit. But the, you know, it, it was you know, I, I argued my points. I said, no, this is actually very. It's a really an American movement. It's, it's as yeah. American as you get. Individual. So all you rights. Australians out there. Yeah, this is Amer no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know what? There's a lot of just Australians and, and, and Canadians no. who are who are totally no. uh, in recognizing that the, the, you know the freedom because they they've gone to the left, far left yep. too. In, in a lot of ways, they were more conservative. So they really were. Yeah, yeah, every, everywhere, you know, you you can talk to you know you talk to someone like Choke out in, in in England. He's on. He's just as conservative as anybody. You know. Yeah. So it's like. It's as universal. But when I say American, I'm just talking about the... the no, I don't. I was just teasing. I was just teasing. Yeah. So you want, want, the, you want to see... the people of the world. You want to see what I'm working on real quick? Yeah. How can I... Uh, can I put you on big screen? Is that... Yeah. Okay. That's... that's okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's you. Wait a minute. So I'm doing colors on the first... On the very how first do, page I, of issue how do I two. Put, how do I make you 
Um, oh, you, here we go. No, there you, you go. You put no. You You're on. Put my. No, no, no. You on my screen. You should see it down at the bottom. Okay, let me remove my screen and then see if yours pops in. Well, I see it now. It's down here. Okay. Yeah, you just add that to stage. Ah, see? okay. There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. This is the first page. I'm still coloring her. Up top, staring down. Um, I'm about halfway through this. these colors here. Nice, I like him. But see, so you got the British guy down there at the bottom left corner, and he's about to shoot our protagonist that's right yeah very cool so it's interesting to see it in color because i have seen it in black and white you know still got to do some color tweaks but yeah it's been fun Mm Hmm. yeah all right well i'm gonna uh um end this and go get something to eat my stomach is growling but I start, you know, whenever I'm in a live stream, I like, I start up here, like, and then I slowly, like, shrink down. Lean, lean down, lean down. And I'm like, like this oh, at the end. I've, I've, I've checked it, like, I'm not paying attention. I'm like this, you know, at, at the end after three hours of it. Start sinking. Just mold into my chair. <laughs> oh, awesome one just showed up. That's cool. All right. Well, uh, you guys have a good evening. And, uh, it was uh thanks for stopping in and checking out and hanging out with us and seeing how this uh ben franklin uh silence do good comic is coming along the cover i'm gonna you know I, I, the great thing is I, I you're letting me uh to do this live and, I, and it's kind of fun just to bring the process yeah, and, you know, I, I can i can bring a camera over here to my drawing table and, and actually show the, the pencil stage and every stage so it's gonna be pretty cool really exciting yeah, it's looking great, man. I'm excited. All right, thanks. All right, want to say goodbye to everyone, and see y'all later, everybody. <laughs>